Look at this darling baby. He's so sweet. Even though he's been spinning at me way more than normal. But I'm going to take that as communication. It's mostly because I say no to bike rides. Or that we're not here jumping off these boulders. Which are on the other side of the creek. I met the guy who owns the mountain. So. He seemed really cool though. So hopefully he's cool. He's quite smitten with Moon Eye. Everyone said, Oh my gosh, looks like such an expensive dog. And I think he is like a blue Merrill with a red undercoat. No idea what's going on, but... He is a good dog. He comes faster than Pumpkin most of the time now. But he has more of a free range. Because I guess he's lived that way forever. I think he hears me talking. He was way up on the mountain. Partying up there. Eating something in the dirt. He was either trying to get a snake or one of these... I don't know what it is. It's like... It looks like a really fat chipmunk, but it's uh, real reddish fur, has like a very round body, or potato-shaped body, I guess. And the tail was like chipmunky, but way larger, like two inches, maybe three-fourths inch across. It was pretty long, but also short, because it wasn't a rat. I've only, I have seen a mouse. In a brush pile. Baby, be careful. That's like the slippery area, but it also has a giant boulder underneath the water, so. Of course, this baby wants it. Let's see if we can see what Moon Eye is doing. Olympic dog. Where'd you go? Only a little fluffy white tail left of him. Hmm. Now Pumpkin, I think, learned his lesson. He's like, it's pretty hard to climb that mountain. I'm just a little dog. So he's just been sniffing around here. And I love that Moon Eye came and he, like, sniffed in between all these rocks. And he was like, okay, it's cool. And he just laid down behind the baby. Pumpkin did alert me to something that he was scared of, and he's usually more curious than frightened uh, in a brush pile. And I was like, I'm going to take that as a let's go. So it's really cool to, like, I feel like I have a pack now, all of us, when we cross the field together. And Moon Eye, like, jumps in front of me and, like, does the dog play in a circle around me. I wish he was a little bit more interested in the baby. I mean, he is curious about him, but Francis doesn't give him any feedback, really. So, he's taking the cues. And I don't, like, I was like, what if the baby gives him a treat? But, you know, Moon Eye's pretty fresh to the fam. So, I don't want to be like, food and baby, go together. I can do it because I know that, like, when I stop looking at the dog, he immediately stops. He, like, takes the hint. He goes, he circles off, he finds a place to lay down, does his own thing. And then we look at each other. But not until I really, like, give him the come here signals does he actually come. <laughs> what are you doing in that slippery water? What are you doing in that water? You gotta be careful. Are you being careful? Are you being careful? I love you. Your tablet's working, but it won't it won't turn back right side up. Okay. Can I wipe it off? Can I wipe it off for you please? Thank you. Try it now. It's working? It's working. Happy baby! I just wish I had, like, an interactive boombox for him. Or, like, an old-fashioned, hardcore, super heavy-duty iPod. 
that had pictures. Because he could probably learn that. He's pretty good with YouTube. He found a lot of his own music. It's so funny, though, that he likes Macklemore and 21 Pilots. Those are probably his two most favorite bands. Uh, he even listened to some Sunflower Post Malone song, which I, just looking at Post Malone, I'm like, eh, I don't really, not interested. I remember when I was a little kid, I would sit with my grandma and watch the news, and every time they'd show the picture of someone who murdered someone on the news, you know, in the little square on the news, you know, on the screen, they'd have a neck tattoo. So I know that's not what neck tattoos are always about. But, hold on. Baby! Come back! Mm -mm -mm. But I would say to my grandmother, I'd say, neck tattoo, murderer. And that was our little kind of one of our inside joke things. But I always think about that when I see somebody like a really scary looking man and they have some illegible person's name written in cursive on their neck I'm like murder <laughs> well I met this one girl and she is just a doll gorgeous cute haircut little bob straight bang tattooed from fingertips to eyelids and she was just a very sweet and kind soul. I was impressed by how open she was as a person. So. Can't judge from the outside. Never know what you're getting. But definitely feel those vibes because they mean something. That's one thing I think people should teach their children. Teach them to follow their vibes. Because, I mean, really, think back to your childhood. Think about somebody that you felt was off in your childhood. Or you had a weird feeling, or you thought they were doing something. or And then, fast forward ten years, that person's like a child molester. Or shot their lover and then committed suicide. So, if you have a feeling, believe it. Oh, and I remember I... I hated this one new friend of my mom when I was like 10 or 11. And uh, I just, I, she seemed so fake. And every time she talked, I felt like she was lying. And uh, she had a real sob story or something. Uh, she was on the news, like the local news because of it also. But that's how my mom lost all of her grandmother's silver. Never got that back. Her name was Joanne. Everyone else loved her and I got in trouble and people were mean to me because I said I didn't like her and I didn't want to be around her. I always think about that. I guess it's a story trapped in the back of my mind. The other guy was making YouTube video uh, when I came upon him last time. Uh, so hopefully he's not coming back right now and he's like standing behind me or anything. No. Okay, we're good still. The cave is like two or three caves away from where we're standing, so... We're kind of far away from it. See my trash pile way over there? Oh no. It's like a bright orange something. Oh, there it is. Picked up all this trash and now I can't get trash service at all for my, where I live. I'm like, please pick up my trash. At least it was a learning lesson for, for Moon Eye. That, in fact, I do not want him to rip apart the, the bags. Luckily, we don't really throw away actual food, but they're like crumbs. These dogs will rip apart 
a potato chip bag for the last crumb. Not pumpkin, though. Pumpkin's never been that way. You can, like, eat a cheeseburger on a coffee table, go to the kitchen, grab napkins and whatever, and he would not steal it. Although in his old age, he's been a little bit more feisty. Usually I give him, like, last bit or crumb, you know, last bite to the doggo. But Pumpkin can't really have people food because then he tries to starve himself. But having Moon Eye, I've been feeding him, slowly introducing Pumpkin to be able to feed next to Moon Eye. Look at these dogs. Oh my gosh. Pumpkin's on the boulder. Moon Eye's in the cave. Moon Eye! Pumpkin! Do you remember your mother? Moon Eye said, No, I'm exploring. Pumpkin said, How do you get down from here? Oh. And then follows Moon Eye. They're always really nice to each other when we're going on adventures together. And then they get home, and like I let Pumpkin out of the trailer when we get home, and he's like, How did this other dog get here? Trying to send Pumpkin packing. But I better go harass this baby and try to teach him sign language one letter at a time. He likes it better than the other kind. I'll let you know. Anyways, have a great day and thank you guys.